Today's talk is all about HR job titles. Who better to do that with than Ricky Baez, 20-year HR veteran? Ricky, are you up for this? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. So we wrote a recent article about the different titles that are in an HR department. So let's start at the top, though. What is HR? You know what, Pete? Uh, so I uh, I teach for the Masters of HR program at uh, Rollins College here in Central Florida. In every class, every semester, I always started with that question, define HR for me. And if I ask a room full of 50 students, I'm going to get 50 completely different answers. So before I define it, let me just, I'm going to put you, put you on the spot here. Let's make believe you're the 51st student in class. So how do you define human resources? So I define it as the... Uh, the, the department that handles everything people related within an organization, you know, keeping them happy, dealing with challenges, making sure that uh, they have the right career path uh, laid out, bringing in the right people at times, but really anything that just involves the, the people that make up the business that allow a business to be successful, HR is typically involved and responsible. How'd I do? I don't know why you're in this class. You get an A. Right. So because that's actually spot on. <laughs> actually, I have a shorter answer, right, because people say for payroll, other people say for benefits in case there's an issue. But at the end of the day, Pete, I mean, HR is defined like this. When the leader of an organization has a vision, human resources makes that vision a reality. So I'll. I'll give you an example. If the CEO of an organization says, you know what, team, I want to increase sales by 25 percent in 12 months. All right. So they give us a goal, right, a measurable goal by a specific time. So once the CEO has that vision, then HR, you know, along with the other executive leadership, starts to figure out what talent do we need to make sure we hit that goal by X time. So that's exactly what HR does, right? HR helps the organization move the needle from A to B. So essentially what you said, right, because you was more specific with the people aspect, which is 100 percent true. But there's other aspects to this as well, which I'm assuming that those 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 different job titles and jobs are going to be in this blog. I read through it. So they're almost all there. They're, yeah, I think they are. Yeah. So yeah. you just let a lot of sales uh, people off the hook, by the way. They're going to be That's relieved a... to know that, that HR is responsible for that 25 percent growth. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no. <laughs> So well, well, those salespeople have to be put there, right? And they got to make sure the pay is right. That's HR. That's, that's HR. All, that, well, it does go hand in hand. I'll, I'll grant you that. Yeah. So yeah, let's it. get into the titles. Okay. First one, in, a, in an entry-level role, HR coordinator. How would you describe that? HR coordinator. I would describe that as the entry level. This is this is where you really cut your teeth to get into that HR role. You start you start to see or work a little bit of everything at the entry level. That way, you get to know the the the, the nuts and bolts of the machine. So, an HR coordinator for somebody who's looking to get into human resources, that is the best place to start. That way, you get to you you get exposed to all the good, the bad, and the ugly. What the machine has to offer. You survive that, you're on your way to a really lucrative HR career. So it's a great place to start for someone who wants to get into HR, doesn't yet have a lot of experience, and really decide whether that's for them long term. Is that fair? That is correct, yes. But 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 you get to see everything, Pete. You get to handle all the tactical stuff, the employer records, the benefit stuff, the payroll stuff. It, it's it's the admin of the HR world. And not, I'm not using that as a bad term. I'm just saying that is a really good entry point that way you can see what the future of, of your career can hold for you. Makes sense. Yeah. Next one, HR generalist. So I think of the HR generalist as the next level up, someone who – depending on the organization, either tends to do a lot of everything or may end up in a certain area that uh, really is whatever is needed to be done at that particular yeah. moment. But if you're an HR generalist, you're really going to get um, your hands in a lot of uh, different areas. Is that is that something you'd agree with? I would agree with that. This is a position. If if I was to uh, compare this to a Navy SEAL team, which that's a stretch, <laughs> right? Comparing this to a Navy SEAL team, this is the person who handles a little bit of everything, right? They're the jack of all trades and the master of none. But this is this is the position where re HR coordinator or HR admin re um, uh, gets promoted into, 
right? And then you have a more in-depth knowledge of every aspect of human resources. Now, this is this if if you was to put this in a career pathing type of mind mapping thing, Pete, then this is the position where it kind of forks out to different areas. This is where you find out, do I want to get into compensation? Do I want to get into training and development? Do I want to get into employer relations? Because you get to touch a little bit of everything with such in-depth knowledge that you start to figure out this is the route I want to take. And then you start following that, uh, that road. So this is where people go to really figure out what they want to specialize in. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So HR generalist, a great position that covers a lot of different areas. That's right. That's right. This is whenever you have something that needs to be done right this second, just it, it, get the HRG on it. He or she will take care of it. So I, I would think in most organizations, a large organization, HR generalists would probably make up the bulk of an HR team. Is that it? Oh, that yeah. Accurate? Absolutely, because you, you can have an HR generalist on Monday do a new employer orientation. On Tuesday, they're going to do a, a comp study. And then on Wednesday, they do an employer relations investigation. Then on Thursday, they're helping out with recruiting. So they 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 really are. They they are the Swiss army knife. There you go. The Swiss army knife of the HR world. I yeah, just, so, I just so, coined that. So far, HR has been responsible for sales. They've been responsible for covert operations in terms of Navy <laughs> sales. And now... Now they're able to uh, to help you with anything. I can't I can't imagine that you're actually an HR person because you have such a a, a a nice perspective on all the things that HR does. I mean, as soon as we're done here, I have to go over to NASA help them with a rocket launch. So we got to hurry this up, man, because I'm going to be late to meet with the rocket scientist. And it's probably no coincidence. <laughs> I saw before we started recording that you're wearing a Superman shirt today. So what, that's what, right. What a, what a shock. <laughs> So, that was not planned, by the way. <laughs> so you gave us a little segue just, just a second ago into the next role, the recruiter. What yes. does the recruiter do? Near and dear to my heart, needless to say. Uh, no. <laughs> so here's the thing. Going back to the beginning of this conversation when we talked about how do you define human resources. So when the CEO says, I'm looking to increase sales by X percent, then the HR team has to take a step back and decide, do we have the skill set here now? to actually make that happen or do we train if we don't do we train people up or do we bring people in so this is the, a decision that the hr leadership has to make right which which one is going to be more efficient to the goal that they're trying to hit so let's let's for the sake of this conversation let's make believe that we don't have the people and the people don't have the capacity to be trained up so the easiest most efficient way to do it is to recruit so, yes. So whenever we we do a gap analysis and we figure out we're missing X percent of, of of a talent pool, then we have to put a strategy together to go out and find those folks. So, yeah, a recruiter, I believe, is a really, really important part of the HR team. It all starts with recruiting. And that's right. In particular, that recruiter is the face of the organization mm -hmm. to any prospective new employee. So I would tell you no, no role is is more important than a recruiter. That's for sure. You know what? So real quick in class, because uh, I talk uh, about recruiting in class quite a bit, and I ask all the students, because some of them are recruiters, I'm like, recruitment is sales, true or false? You would be surprised how many of the students pick false for that. And I'm like, guys, it's it, it definitely is sales. And they're shocked. Like, how is that sales? You're going out there. You're convincing people why it's a good idea to come to your organization. So that definitely is sales. And if you're not good at sales, I would venture to guess you're going to have a hard time being a recruiter because you, you need some salesmanship to make sure that you bring in the right talent for the right roles in the organization to hit the goals that the CEO is putting out there for you. I, I agree that a recruiting function is largely sales. The, the only difference I would say there is that I think of the recruiter as someone um, who shouldn't sell the position as much as they just need to be open in their communication and make sure there's a mutually good fit. And that's what a really good salesperson does. That's a topic for a different day. That's but right. it's not to lead someone to the path, but rather give them all the uh, information that they need to make the right decision uh, so both parties are ultimately happy. So critical role recruiter for sure. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. All, All right. right. Ne next one up, benefits administrator. Now we're getting Ooh. into you know, some some real meaty stuff, right? The benefits That's administrator right. is someone who uh, 
has a very large responsibility for for existing staff, and of course they contribute to um, to to the things that will attract new employees. But that's a that's there's a lot of responsibility associated with that role. Absolutely, you know what, Pete? And going back to the HR generalist position in a smaller organization, the HR generalist normally would handle benefits, right? If it's a two three hundred person organization, even five hundred, that is the case. As you start to get bigger, the organization starts getting bigger. You start getting employees into the thousands and tens of thousands. You're going to have to parse out this this type of a uh, of a uh, environment into its its own specific department. So you're going to need somebody to be a benefits expert. Because here's why: there's some benefits that apply in Florida, some that apply in California, some that don't apply uh, uh, apply to New York. So if you have a large organization, you are going to need somebody who is the 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 subject matter expert in benefits in all the different states, and to make sure that it's properly applied to ensure that we're retaining we are retaining not retraining retaining the right type of talent. So yes, you do need that one specialized person to handle this, especially after ACA back in 2008, 2009, that made it a little bit more difficult. So you are going to need somebody to handle that difficulty and benefits. And you make a great point that's worth noting is the smaller organizations aren't going to have all of these titles. And mm -hmm. really the bigger the organization, the more diversity they can have mm -hmm. among the responsibility of the role where that jack of all trades person who uh, may not be called a generalist, they may just be called HR manager at a yeah. small organization, um, but really it does uh, have all the responsibilities fall to them. And, and we can see that there are so many very things that, that make up an HR department that there really is a need for these roles. And as organizations grow, I think that's when they start to uh, diversify the, the titles and responsibilities. Yeah, because normally you have an employer, employee relations department, a benefits department, and all these different departments because that's how big the organization is. I've actually I've worked for four organizations that size, and it's you know as you grow up in your HR career, you really have to focus on your relationship building skills, especially those large organizations, so you can have that business relationship with the different departments. So it definitely does help. So when you get big enough and you have all these different things going on, you need someone to do the analysis on it. So next ah. title, HR analyst. That, that, is, that is a critical, critical role for a large organization. 1,000%, Pete. You know, it, it, it's, it's with, any with any strategic business process, you need data-driven choices. You need to make a decision for the organization based on data. It cannot be on a gut instinct. So you do need, especially as the organization gets bigger, you do need somebody to take all that information, right, all that raw data, put it into a blender and bring and, and bring out this beautiful drink, right? I got, I always got to use food for this, right? But you need all those ingredients and then you got to paint a picture for the executive leadership to make a decision, right? So do we need to throw more marketing dollars on this zip code or, or if there's a recruiting function, if you have, um, uh, I'm sorry, a recruiting initiative, if you are looking to diversify your current staff, you want to look at who you currently have, where you're recruiting from, and you need an analyst who is really good with data, taking that raw data and painting a picture that executives can fully understand so they can make a decision going forward. So if you like people and numbers, this is the kind of role you should per pursue. That is correct. This is somebody who's systematic. This is These are the folks who love Excel spreadsheets and they love playing with them. Um, whenever I was looking for an HR analyst a, a, a bunch of years ago for another organization, I always take people out to a restaurant and, uh, you know, to, to, to get their guard down and how I would always gauge how well they work with Excel. I will look at their eyes, look at their mannerisms, and I will just mention about an Excel project that, that, that they worked on. And I don't care what their resumes say. If I saw them light up and their eyes got really bright and they start re really geeking out on it, this is somebody who I'm going to hire because they love playing with numbers. So, at, well, that's another show, right, on, on how to interview. But I just, I start geeking out with this and uh, uh, Pete because um, these are the folks I like to mingle the most because um, they have, they have a really good knack of telling a really good story about what's wrong with the organization and what you can do to fix it or how can you, you can proactively work on a problem. So it's really fun. Numbers don't lie, right? They don't. They don't. All right. Next one. 
HR director. Mm-hmm. Now we're getting into into your world a little bit more of uh, of the people who you know get to tell everyone else what to do, right? Mm-hmm. But, That's right. But 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 joking <laughs> aside, the HR director has a has a very large responsibility uh, in 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 any organization. So. With the example that I used earlier, right, the HR director and the and, and any position higher than that, normally there are in these meetings where a decision is made to say, hey, we need to increase X by this time. So this is the person who knows their team inside and out, like, like a Navy ship, right? The captain of the ship knows every single nut and bolt of that ship. They've worked every single position in that ship, so they know it from top to bottom. That's what an HR director is. This is somebody who knows the areas of opportunities of their team, the strengths of their team, and whenever a project comes down the pike, he or she knows who to give that project to, how to motivate them, and keep that team motivated. The number one, the number one skill set of an HR director, and I don't have any data to back this up, this has just been my experience, is the relationship building skills because they have to be able to keep that team motivated to have to be an expert. Well, not an expert, but just be knowledgeable of all the laws and the states that they work in. That way they know what landmines to avoid when guiding their team. So this is a, 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 a senior level leadership position that is crucial to any team because they're the ones who, who motivate it, set the tone and make sure that the employees are doing exactly what they need to do. Not because they have to, because they truly enjoy the job that they're in. That is their job. Which is important. And that's the goal for every role, right? Find the one Absolutely. That, that, that you can do well in and that you enjoy along the way. That's um, I'm glad you brought that up. Sure. Before we get to the last one, which is the chief human resources officer, the top dog in HR. How would you describe that role? Are they on the golf course all day? <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, it, it's look, iPads are are relevant these days. So to see them at a desk with their feet up, drinking coffee, uh, reading the Wall Street Journal, um, that's something that I see quite often. No, I'm just kidding. I don't see that. <laughs> no, look. The chief HR officer, it's that is the top person. That is the person who is always attached to the hip to that CEO, right? Because look, this again, the CEO's job, their job is to make sure they put a vision out that's so clear that everybody at the bottom of the organization fully understands what the CEO wants to do. So the chief human resources officer, they make sure that they make that that vision a reality, right? Because that CHRO he or she would talk to the HR director or the VP of HR and say, here's the goal. Here's what needs to happen. So they are the CEO of the HR world, right? Perfect. That's exactly who they are. That makes sense. And I like to think of it, and I wish I could make a, a case to have this, this title always referred to as a chief people officer, because I yes. think that most accurately describes what that role is. Yeah. So Ricky, this is, this is a great overview. Thank you for your time. Did I miss anything on, in the article? You know what? I, I got to point something out there, Pete. Uh, so I see, I see recruiter, I see coordinator, I see generalist, I see CHRO, you know, people go to work 99.9% of the people go to work because they want to get paid. Right. Obviously they do it for a reason. I don't see payroll in here, man. Where's Uh payroll? The payroll specialist. The payroll specialist. This, that's, I mean, that's why I go to work. (laughs) So I'll I'll tell you that the pay, the payroll specialist did not make the cut and I'll tell you why. Okay. Because not every organization puts a payroll specialist in the HR department. It's an it's a finance and accounting function, and a lot of times it won't be in the HR department. So that was on the that was that was uh, the payroll specialist was on the fence, and we decided to leave it out of the article. You think we you disagree oh, with that decision? I think we should have put it in there. I think we should have put it in there because you know when there's a problem, when you know a. I tell all of my teams, and you and I have had this conversation, I tell every team that I've ever led that every concern, every complaint that comes into the HR department is in a first-come, first-served basis, except two things, any sexual harassment or discrimination issue or pay. Pay always goes to the front of the line. And there, and when my team asks me, well, why is that? I'm like, if your pay was messed up, would you want to weigh in a queue? Absolutely not, right? Never, ever mess with the reason people come to work and that's pay. That's why I'm really, I'm really uh, um, adamant about that. So that's what I'm thinking from an HR perspective. I would put payroll in there because HR is the first organization, the first department that people go in when there's something wrong with their paycheck. And 
Another, you know what? I wish we could do the skill sets of what an HR uh, 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 person needs because um, you would need some tact, you would need some respect, and you would need some patience because when people's pays are messed up, it's not it's not going to start off as a cute little nice conversation. <laughs> No, right? no, it's people not. are going to be upset. So you got to put everything away. If you're about to go on lunch, I tell my team, uh, you you help the person with the pay issue. You go on lunch later. If it's four fifty nine, you help the person. We'll deal with the overtime, but never ever mess with pay. To me, it belongs to the HR department. All right. Well, I, I will I will stand corrected on that one and <laughs> and and say that we missed it out. Although I, I I still think it's you know it's a bit of a debate. So maybe we can continue that later. We'll continue, but just real quick, it, it's it's in other areas. Yes, it does have both feet. It, it HR payroll has a foot in the HR pool and the finance pool, right? Because obviously that's money, that's finance. You got to make sure you're operating in the black, and payroll doesn't go over too much in your PL. So I will concede and say it belongs there in the finance, but HR as well. Well, what we can agree on for sure is that HR is a critical function of any organization. So hopefully everyone listening, you've benefited by these uh, these titles. Feel free to check out the career guides, the salary data, and our open jobs for each of these roles. Ricky, thanks again. Thank you. Have a good one.